hard to believe it's been almost 10 years since then. Time flies. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, how'd it feel out there tonight? Oh, man. Beautiful feeling, man. When people are, you feel the energy from the people like that. It's nothing but goodness. You can hear our release on CDs and whatever, but when, once you come out and watch us live, it's a whole different energy, you know? People feel that energy, and I think they go with us, and that's what makes it go really awesome with us, you know? It's the energy that goes, recipro reciprocates, you know, all the way around, and it makes our, our shows go as, as great as they go. You took a different approach with, with this record this time. In the past, it was basically, you know, do it yourself. You did it your way, and, uh, and it was all good. So why did you decide to mix it up, change, change the way you did it this, this time? Uh, well, we, we, we'd done it that way for years. Um, and, you know, I guess when, when you reach this point, we were five albums in, this was our sixth record, um, been a band for this long. Um, we just wanted to do something different. We wanted to change it up. We wanted an outside perspective. We didn't want to make the same album that we made before. Um, when we reached out to Steve Berlin, um, you know, he was very receptive. He was a fan, uh, and we were a fan of his. And I think it was a good match. And he kind of pushed us to try some new things. And I think it worked out in the end. We were happy with the results. We had songs that we did it this way, and then we went with him, and he said, hey, try it this way. Let's cut this part out. Let's, you know, let's do it this way. And we're like, hmm, okay, that sounds great, man. So when we tried it, it worked. You know, so we were pretty happy with that. And that's what we have in Problemas. How has your music changed from, well, I guess going back to 2000 when, when you all started? I think an easy thing to say is that it's matured. <laughs> because we've matured as musicians. Um, when we started out, it was really all about about the party, really. <laughs> um, we'd, we'd, we'd go to the club, and it was about rocking a show, you know, late at night, I mean, as rowdy as possible. And the music was there, and, and we loved playing it, but I think we were concentrating more on the show and the reaction. Um, probably when Jose joined the band, which was about two years in, we started to get a little more serious about the writing. And that's grown the whole time to where we are now. So the writing has matured, the musicianship has matured, and I think we're a little more concerned with what we're presenting. Um, of course, we're still trying to rock the party, but <laughs> it's a little bit different. So speaking of the writing, how do you write your songs? Is you it know, a, is it, it a, could like be a, a collective thing. Everybody's involved. Absolutely. There's some of the stuff, and some of the stuff, it, we give the opportunity to people to bring their own ideas uh, and develop that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we're all receptive to, to people's uh, whatever they have. And then if the person has the whole idea, then we'll do that. If the person has, like, an idea and then we need to develop it, then everybody can pitch in. And boom, here we go. You know, so there's different approaches to it. Even though we're trying to evolve musically, you know, we're trying to do something different. We, we mix this with that. But we always go back to what made Grupo Fantasma, what it is with the fans. You know, people want to hear that groove that makes them dance. You know what I mean? So if we can do that and then we go in different directions and, and try to make it new, so to speak. It's not really new, but you're just mixing different ideas and see what, what really fits. And um, people, even, you know, in Austin, in Austin is like a beautiful place to be because they're really receptive to what we do and we're really happy and proud to be here in Austin, Texas. So, um, that's what we do, you know, we try to do new ideas and then see if they, it catches on with people and then we'll try to evolve and then to go into the next thing, which is what we don't know. Mm -hmm. But I'd love to hear your story about how you made that connection with Prince, how he discovered your music and how you guys, what was it like to begin with? 
to be able to work with Prince, to play with Prince? Um, well, you know, it, it started out in 2006 when he had his club in Las Vegas, 3121. Um, and we had a connection where we found out that he needed a band for Thanksgiving um, night because it was a Latin night. It was a Thursday night. And we, uh, through this connection, they asked us to send in a CD. It was our live album at the time. They said Prince was going to check it out, which we thought was was bogus. Like, yeah, whatever. Prince can't <laughs> check it out. But we got word back that he liked it. And, he liked it. Yeah. And they wanted us to go out there. So we flew out. Uh, we canceled our plans. It was super last minute. We canceled our, our Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving plans. We go out there. We do the show. There weren't many people in the club. We didn't meet Prince. His gear was set up. And obviously signs of him everywhere. But we didn't actually Purple. meet him. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we do the show. Someone thinks they catch a glimpse of him on the side stage area. Like, hey, I think I saw Prince. All right. So we play... <laughs> Late at night, I think we started at 1 in the morning. We are done by like 3.30. Had a flight back to Austin at 6.30 in the morning. We landed and we heard Prince loved it. He wants you guys to be the house band, which means flying out to Vegas every Thursday. So that started this, this saga. <clears throat> and it was about three shows in. Like I said, his gear was always set up. It's so about three shows in. We're in the middle of one of our tunes. It's a guitar solo coming up, and it's my guitar solo, and I'm about to play this solo. As I go to hit the first note, somebody else starts soloing. He's in. And it's Prince, <laughs> and he appears like magic, and he's on stage, and he takes my solo. And, of course, I step back and watch, <laughs> watch him do this, and, and, and we're like, oh, my God. And he finishes, and he disappears as quickly as he came in. Um, we finished the show, and that's all we talked about. Wow, we just played with Prince, but we still didn't meet him. <laughs> we flew home from there, um, and it was on that Sunday, so that was Thursday, it was on Sunday that uh, we got another call, and it was like, how quickly can you be at the airport? <laughs> Prince wants you guys in LA to play this party for the Golden Globes. He won the uh, Golden Globe <laughs> that year. Um, and that was the first time we met him. We went out to do this party, and he walked into the room it was at a hotel um, in a suite, or a, a presidential suite. We were set up like in the living room. He walks in. He's like, what's up, y'all? Thanks for coming out. <laughs> and he's like, we're going to have a party. There's going to be a lot of people here. Some people are going to want to play with you. Um, you guys do your thing, and I'm going to be in and out. Do your thing, he said. And it ended up being this you know, incredible, star-studded, mega A-list party. Helicopters outside trying to catch a glimpse. Um, but I think that was like the test to see how, how we could handle something like that. And he gave us tons of freedom. And it went well. And it, that's, that's really what started it. Um, the relationship kind of blossomed from there, from opening shows to doing private parties with him to going out to London for his 21 nights in London, opening a show there, doing a private party. Um, doing an after party. In Austin, we did a private party. Yeah, we yeah. did a private party in Austin. Tons of after parties. That was kind of his forte, you know. Um, the experience was incredible. You know, the first time that we rehearsed with him, like an actual rehearsal, was we flew to LA to, for the Alma Awards. And it was a marathon rehearsal. We were at the rehearsal space for probably six hours before he showed up. Super nervous. Um, no instruction. He showed up. And it was right to business. He walks in. He's like, y'all want to make some noise? And, and <laughs> walks right up to me and asks me what I'm playing on this song and counts it off. Like, no band. Just, what are you playing on this song? One, two, three. And I'm like, oh, shit. So, <laughs> so I play it for him. And then he grabs his guitar. And he goes, why don't you play this instead? <laughs> instead. So you can imagine. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, you know, not, not to get too into it, um, he taught us a lot. He taught us a lot about showmanship. He taught us a lot about professionalism. Um, like I said, it was nonstop music with him, always. There was a little bit of joking around, but our relationship with him was about the music, and it was about playing, and it was rehearsing, and working out new stuff, and he gave us some freedom. Um, he also taught us a lot of things. 
And it was just an incredible experience. I mean, obviously for our career, it changed a lot of things for us. It From, from one day to the next, it became, wow, you guys are the guys that play with Prince. <laughs> of course, everybody wanted to know about kind of these frivolous things <laughs> about him. But for us, it was just like, we're learning so much. It's, it's about the music. It's about this experience. And we took away a lot. And like I said, it changed us. Um, and we'll always be grateful for him giving us that opportunity. I think he put us in some situations that probably for us at the time was way above. Uh, I mean, he, he trusted us in situations that were probably way beyond what <laughs> we should have been able to handle at that point. But, but he gave us that freedom. and, and it He changed. liked our music. He really did like our music. That's what it comes down to. Prince exactly. liked your music. He's so. like, okay, I like that. I think he always wanted to do Latin music. You know, he always, so he just grabbed onto us and we grabbed onto him. And it, it became a beautiful experience for us, man. It sounds pretty magical while it lasts. Right. Something you'll never, obviously, never forget. That's right. I can't think of anything better, any better way to end our conversation here than, than that story. I don't know if it's the first time you've actually had a chance to tell the whole story on, on camera, but it's. Um. Uh, yeah, probably. On, you know, <laughs> that <camera>. detail. Yeah. <laughs> for the record. That's yeah, awesome. for the record. You know. All right. Thank uh, you so much for having us. It's been us. a great day. Been All a lot of magic. Limits. Been a lot of magic out there on the we stage. We appreciate tonight, you. So. Thank you, Terry. This was great.